good morning students welcome back to digital signal processing class in today's class we are going to see the block diagram of digital signal processing so before proceeding for today's class in the previous class we have discussed the introduc introduction of your digital signal processing second thing the problem based upon discrete fourier transform and inverse discrete fourier transform in today's class we are going to see the block diagram of dsp that is nothing but digital signal processing so let us see what is a block diagram consist of so we are seeing the block diagram of your dsp so in this what actually the basic thing what we are seeing we are going to see we are starting our block diagram with a microphone the reason is that why i am taking the example of microphone is that what is the use of a microphone so whatever i am speaking like i do have a mic i am speaking you can able to hear from the speaker right so we are using one with the help of one microphone we are taking we are going to see the function of microphone how it is going to work as a signal processing what are the type of signal we are passing to it and how it is going to work as a signal processor for understanding this in a better way we see this complete block diagram of digital signal processing so let us see so first thing what is our aim we are, our aim is that we should pass our signal and we should process it so process in the sense what we are doing we are using a main thing the heart of your computer is what it's a processor so what is the function of the processor like without heart our body cannot give the beating heart beating we cannot find without the beating we cannot able to do our functions right the same way without the processor the signal cannot able to transmit from whatever the inputs we are giving it cannot be correlate to a specific output so in order to do these things the main part is about the processor so i am taking the help of one microphone and this microphone what we are doing what is the use of microphone actually it is used to take a input what type of input we are giving suppose if i am giving a voice so what is this voice indicates it's a nothing but the input what i am giving to the processor what i am giving to the input function through the microphone that microphone is passing to signal conditioner what is the meaning of this thing whatever the voice i am giving it is which signal it is continuous signal for example it is nothing but like a sine wave for every specific duration of time it keep on changing that means i am passing my signal here to the signal conditioner what is the use of the signal conditioner over here it is used to convert your desired signal to a undesired signal the meaning is that if i want to go for a specific signal conditioner which i am passing to the filter what is the use of the filter it will take the desired signal and it will try to eliminate the unwanted signal like when we able to hear from the loudspeaker we may heard some sort of noise along with our signal so what is that noise is actually that is nothing but your unwanted signal you try to remove that unwanted signal you try to get the desired signal that can be done by using one filter so what is this filter is all about here we are using aliasing anti aliasing filter in detail we'll see in your unit 4 we are having the designing of anti aliasing filter and aliasing filter we do have some problem how to eliminate the noise from the signal so that part you uh, right now you understand that we are using one anti aliasing filters over here in order to eliminate your unwanted signal with a desired signal so this till now what we have done we have passed we have taken a microphone we pass the signal that is passed to a signal conditioner here the signal whatever the signal we are giving like if you are giving the speech if you are giving the speech part that is nothing but continuous signal it is passed to the signal conditioner till here all are in what it is in continuous form right so till now we pass to a anti aliasing filter so after that your computer or your processor it cannot understand your continuous form what it does it try to modify into digital what is the meaning of digital It try to converts that number into zeros and ones who will do it we had a specific part that is called analog to digital converter what is the input we are giving we are giving one analog signal so suppose you do have this type of analog signal so what is the output of this thing it is taken the output as digital because our processor can understand zeros and ones like if you have discussed in 
if you are going to discuss in microprocessor that is 8086 whatever the info inputs we are giving based upon the assembly language code what is that assembly language code it is nothing but the combination of your binary code itself that means hexadecimal code you are you aware of it hexadecimal we do have octal we had we had different types of it so how it is going to take that numbers that is done by using analog to digital converters so there are different analog to digital converters we already have your people have already discussed in your electronic devices class in your digital electronic class that basic you need to keep in your mind that whatever the signal your signal is what analog in nature we are trying to convert into digital what is the reason for this because we are passing to a processor so the processor we can understand the digital signal it cannot understand the analog form so till now what we have done we have passed our signal to the processor till now processor reach but pro from processor we will not able to get our output what we will do we want we cannot understand this binary right we can understand the continuous signal what we have passed suppose I have typed over here if I give a signal as like a hello so other person should understand should hear the same like a hello only he cannot understand ones and zeros right so in order to do these things we are taking digital to analog converter so this is normally called it as d to a converter so what is the use of d to a converters whatever the inputs this information is in which form it is in binary form that you are trying to convert into analog form right so this is done by the d to a converter so that d to a converter till now we reach it but when you see this d to a converter output it may have some noise right as I already said you whatever the information we are going, going to give it cannot get the exactly the same one it may have some distortion because of your part what you are connecting so in order to eliminate those things what we are doing again we are taking here what we have taken anti aliasing filter where over there we are will take aliasing or smoothing filter so what is the use of this smoothing filter if they have some distortion like if I give sine, sine wave like this it may get the output like this in distorted form like this I do give so I need to remove this distortion right I don't want to get these part I want to remove these portions I need to make the signal smoother so how we'll do it what is the criteria to do these things that is done by the smoothing filter so that smoothing filter try to get the desire whatever the inputs you are giving try to get the same output over here right so since it's a microphone so what is the output of this microphone would be a speaker so here we are considering as a loudspeaker so this is the way you are smoothing filter will convert the signal then this is passed to a the same filter that is smoothing filter then it is giving the desired input what you are getting over here so then you will get the same information like a hello like so if you are typing like a hello you want to get the same thing over here so in order to get that thing we want so so students so we have seen the block diagram so once again see this thing we'll explain you the complete detail about it how it is going to work so what we have done we have taken microphone in the microphone what you're giving you're giving input so input in the form of continuous form so that continuous form is we are taking like a signal conditional what is the use of this signal conditional take the signals whatever the we are giving like if you are giving the sine wave we take that sine wave then again we pass to the filters that is the anti-aliasing filter he'll try to segregate try to modify the desired input signal to undesired input signal that is done by the anti-aliasing filters so like in your communication or some other thing you may come across like a sampling theorem what is the sampling theorem is all about you will be having one sampling frequency fs greater than or equals to two times a maximum frequency so if it is equals fs is equals to two times of fm or fs is less than two times of fm here we come to know the meaning of your frequency the frequency component what we are giving it has a specific meaning for it so what is this meaning of that if you had fs is greater than or equals to two times of fm in this we are going to see the input signal what we are passing to the desired output one so that filtering part can be done by using the failiasing filter so then the same signal we are passing to a to d converter because it is an analog in nature it is completely continuous in form that 
you want to pass through the processor processor can understand the digital one so in order to do these things we are converting a to d converter there are different types of methods you people have seen that methods we are going to use in this a to d converter after that we got the binary form like this we got it so this whatever the information it's not specific this code it may get any code that depends upon your input signal whatever you are passing but the combination here should be zeros and ones like if you give alpha numeric value like ascii code a b c d if you type every ascii code small alphabets uh, bigger alphabets lower case upper case special characters everything has a specific code so that code part whatever the information you are giving that could be converted into this form zeros and ones then that is passed to the our main part that is the processor so the different processors like in your cell phone you people have seen the processor we will be having pentium 4 pentium 5 or a different versions quad core everything is there so every processor what is the use of the main processor it just like a working without the processor your system cannot work so without the things you need to pass from the processor so till now we have passed our information the other person has not received it so to, in order to receive these things we are taking the reverse so a to d reverse is what here a to d is there here what we are doing we are taking d to a because we have passed analog so we want to get analog here only so that information of ones and zeros this 10110 the same thing if i want to take it 1011000 till now processor process the data and done done the operation whatever you have to perform that is done by the processor from here it is passed to d to a converter so d is what digital input this is what digital inputs so that has to convert into analog form like this so you have this analog form so this is the output of your d to a converter after this d to a converter you are passing to what there what you have used in you have taken a anti aliasing filter this is nothing but the aliasing filter or smoothing filter so this aliasing or smoothing filter what is the use of this thing this is try to remove or reduce the unwanted signal or noise then it is passed to the loudspeaker from the microphone this is the input loudspeaker that's the output that's how your digital signal processing just an example of your microphone we have taken and we have explained its block diagram so in today's class you people should understand and make the note of the block diagram and write points by your own in tomorrow's class we are going to see the more problems based on fft that is fast fourier transform dft we had different methods like linear convolution is there circular convolution is there matrix multiplication methods are there those problems we are going to see in upcoming classes thank you for today's class and make the notes of this thing